probably necessary. They, they, they both were both smallish banks in South Africa. There's certain fees that's uh, necessary for having two bank licenses. And I think uh, acquiring them is probably putting economies of scale. And we know Brian Joffe is very good at buying the right assets mm. at the right price. So it would be interesting to see what the price actually was. Uh, it's not known yet to the market. It was only uh, on sense that uh, the one is acquiring the other one. So, yeah, it would be interesting later on in maybe in the financial statements uh, of Bitvest or Grindr to see what the price actually was. Mm. Do you see any approval barriers here? The expectation is for this to be wrapped up at the end of the year. How do you see it? Yeah, I don't think there would be anything else. I mean, it's, uh, they basically do the same uh, roles, both of those banks. It's just a, a matter of economies of scale. Um, so I don't think there's anything strange towards uh, competition commissions or whatever to, to be held back. Mm -hmm. Now, furniture retailer Steinoff plans to list in Frankfurt. I see they gathering up some funds, close to 8 billion rand, I would imagine. That's ahead of that listing. Uh, but its shares did take a bit of a dip today, didn't it? Yeah, look, I think they've issued about 350 million with a capital raising mm -hmm. of new shares uh, offshore markets. Um, and that, of course, they've done it, I think, placement price of 52. It, it traded in 59 rand yesterday locally, so you should they should find something in between uh, the price today. At the start of the day, I think it was down about 9 or 10%. It was close to 53 rand. I think it's creeping up slowly today. I think it's almost to 56 rand at the moment. So somewhere between the two is the place it should be. Uh, but they've been brilliant. And, and I think the way of, of, of being um, getting capital uh, at, at, and, and leveraging your balance sheet mm -hmm. and buying cheap assets when um, a few years back when... Uh, Lending was just so cheap uh, that you couldn't ignore it, and assets were cheap. Uh, people were concerned about their balance sheets at that stage, but I think they've done exactly what you should have done: taken on leverage when uh, as, uh, lending is cheap, buying cheap assets. They bought a company called Conferama those yeah. days for 0.5 percent of price to book, and it's paying off now. Now they 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 looking at listing there, maybe uh, deleveraging the balance sheet a little bit. But certainly there is no other retailer or furniture retailer decent listed anywhere in Europe. So it's a bit of a recovery story in Europe, and I think they'll do good as well when they list. Because it's list. not an easy thing to do today, is it? No, I don't think so. And, and I think it, it's cost a bit as well. But these guys are starting to get big. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they turn or whatever plan is working for them. And it's actually one of those shares that doubled in the last year on the local board. So they had a, a bad rating, but they still, they're still they not expensive. They, they're not highly rated on a PE multiple, although they've been growing their, their, their earnings by about 30% per annum over the last two, three years. They still trade at about a 12 PE, which is a huge discount uh, against our local market. And I think people will find favor with it in uh, European markets as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I was looking at uh, some figures from construction firm Avenge, its full-year earnings. I see dropping as much as 10%. Another platinum strike-related consequence. Yeah, it's a string of them, isn't it? Yeah, look, and I, I think we, we've realized actually how much it cost the economy, the striking and labor unrest that we had in South Africa. And we, there's a new one uh, starting just now again uh, in the engineering side. Um, so certainly, we, I, mean, I know everybody talked about the 21 billion revenue and 12 or 14 billion lost in salaries in the Rustenburg area. But if you look at the other industries actually filtering through, uh, their earnings are suffering as well. You saw that with some of the other, not just the Venge and the construction side, yeah. but you saw that with companies like Udeco, who actually got 50% mining exposure. Uh, at the moment, they got about 30% in engineering consumables as well, so they're now striking on that front. So I think it costs South Africa a bit more than uh, we estimated. Yep. Yeah. Haran, before I let you go, just uh, two things I want your take on. First of all, we've got the ECB deciding on the interest rates later on this afternoon. And then what usually does get released on a Friday, uh, the uh, job numbers from the U.S. is actually going to be released today. Two important factors uh, that the markets would be watching? Yeah, I think especially for the short term, guys. Uh, from the ECB side, I don't think we expect anything. They've actually cut interest rates the previous time and they've uh, mentioned and started a new uh, asset purchasing uh, and, and some subsidized loan facility that they're starting. Uh, the, the, I think it would be interesting to see how that's progressing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and people would probably look at that, but I don't think there's anything uh, cutting from 0.15 interest rates uh, at the moment. They're already in negative real interest rate uh, scenario, and they actually hoping and praying for some inflation because that's what they're fighting on that front. Another front, the job number, yes, it's big for traders, uh, but the bigger picture is the U.S. employment is getting better, and I think we, we're dipping to about below 7% again, and that was what the Fed was actually looking for to start their tapering program. So, yeah, that's progressing well. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Gerbrand Smith from NEFG, thanks indeed for coming.